Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. It's now time for the featured bout of the evening. From the four corners of the world, to the four corners of this ring, the fight starts now! Welcome to sunny Cardiff, day two of fight week in the Welsh capital and crunch time for the former British and Commonwealth super featherweight champion Joe Cordina has a huge opportunity in his home city against that man, Kenichi Agawa, the IBF world super featherweight champion. They'll do battle over 12 rounds for the title Saturday night live on the zone. Big opportunity this for Cordina. We'll hear from him and the current champion at the press conference this afternoon. All the fighters on the undercard head of a big night in Cardiff on Saturday. Lauren, Sophia, Valentina and little Jojo. Sorry I've been away again for so long. 12, 13 weeks of hard graft. I've been away from you. It's quite hard to think that I'm missing girls' birthdays, first words, but one day you'll understand. It's all for you. And when I'm back, ignore the cuts, ignore the bruises, because I'll be a champion of the world. But even better than that, I'll be back home with you. People I love. For now, do as your mother says, and I'll be back home soon. Love, Dad. Yeah, a huge night this for Joe Cordino on Saturday in Cardiff, his home city. A chance to become the 13th uh, world champion in Welsh boxing history. Um, Darren, uh, three kids there on the VT. Uh, I've known Joe seven, eight years before he even had his firstborn, Sophia. You know what it's like to have loads of kids as well, but you didn't have loads of kids when you were boxing. Yeah. Um, how difficult will this last six months well, have been of juggling? Do you know, I think he's doing the right thing. I mean, he's shown how disciplined he is and what this means to him. Moving away down to Essex, training with Tony Sims. I, I, I guess... Not that his children, his family are a distraction, but sometimes it can be, your home life can be when you're training. So I think to get away, shut away and, and completely switch off and just concentrate on training it is exactly the right thing to do. And I think it's paid off dividends for, for Joe, who, who's looked amazing. You know, I think we've seen what a skillful guy he is, but I think all of that aside, he's showing us now how much he wants this, how much this means to him. And he said it, it's been a dream of his since he was a kid, you know, a distinguished uh, amateur pedigree. I mean, went to every major tournament there is, but his goal was always to be a world champion. And I think what he's doing, taking himself away from his, his lovely family will be hard, but it just showed what this means to him. These are the sort of uh, sacrifices you need to make. If you want to be the best, if you want to be a world champion, you have to make these kind of uh, decisions and he's doing it and it's paying off like I said massive fan of Joe not only as a as a fighter we've had him commentating with us he, he's a good crack yeah, he's isn't he? a good laugh um, good personality um, trains his socks off he speaks to Tony Sims uh, when, when he's in the gym he's always learning taking things on board Tony's always impressed with him at, at how well he, he's looking and, and yeah, I've never he's... seen him look out of shape in 8-9 years no. through the amateurs everything he's never ever ballooned no. once always looked well, Tony would bit. never accept that anyway but he, he's never needed to have that kick up the backside. he wants to he wants to be a champion and I think everything now I mean that that, that gym may I add is absolutely booming yeah. so you can see how they're all just feeding off each other's success and I think Joe wants to be the guy in there who's the world champion and, you know going to be flying the flag for them um, Kenichi Ogawa was fighting for his national title the, the Japanese national title I think it was 2015 um, about 14 or 15 and 0 when, when Joe Caldini was just coming back from the, the world amateur champs Ogawa's got nearly double the experience in the professional game against some higher level opposition um, this is I mean he's a, he's a big favourite regardless of the fact that he's, he's away from home in Cardiff, um, he's the reigning champion, and by rights, he should be the favourite on Saturday, shouldn't yeah, he? Yeah, look, I, yeah, yeah, you look at his record and look at the way he's dispatched his opponents mm. with with ease at times. He can box. He's naturally aggressive. He likes to manoeuvre fighters onto his huge right hand. So I think 
to get a little technical now. I think Joe's going to have to be very smart, going to have to move uh, away from that right hand. He's going to have to be wary, though, because, like I say, a guy was crafty. He'll, he'll move you on to that right hand by throwing left hooks and left hooks to the body. He'll know he hit the target. I think being disciplined for Joe is extremely important. Not only disciplined, but being switched on. He cannot afford to switch off for a second because, like I say, that power in that right hand really is tremendous. And he's confidence is extremely high at the minute he comes over I've sort of had a glimpse of him and he's got that sort of no nonsense attitude yep. uh, look on, on his face he's like, I'm here strictly for business he's not lapping up any fanfare being the world champion this is just another notch on the belt for Agawa he looks serious but Joe looks nice and relaxed I just think like I say I'm rooting for Joe um, he's got to be switched on for every second of every round uh, ten fights uh, on the bill on Saturday, nine on the undercard, five are, are on before the bell. We'll be joined by uh, Barry Jones, who of course was with me yesterday and was uh, honestly the most brilliant pundit I've ever worked with. He's fantastic. Um, <laughs> Barry, <laughs> uh, we've got five fights. Monique Bucks uh, will be in action in her debut. Ben Crocker and uh, Kieran Jones, two of uh, Gary Lockett's fighters. Joe Morgan will be in action as well. Callum French will be finishing things off uh, against... Um, Gadatam Taylor uh, that's the fifth fight before the bell all the way up to about 7 o'clock we will go live um, with Gamalia Five returns to action since that defeat to Jason Cunningham last year uh, Sky Nicholson back in action for the fourth time in 12 weeks amazing start to her career Dalton Smith um, back in action ahead of what uh, we believe is going to be a British title challenge at 140 a bit later on uh, this year Zelfa Barrett and Fruit Korbanov will both have an eye uh, on the winner of the main event of course if they are victorious Korbanov of course uh, fought Joe Cordina a couple of fights ago and, and gave him a good go too Zelfa Barrett in a tough test and of course the European title is on the line at Super Featherweight for that one um, all sets us up very nicely for the main event Joe Cordina challenging Kenichi Gawa for the IBF Super Featherweight World title um, we're going to hear from all of the fighters this afternoon um, of course we'll be uh, live at the Wayne tomorrow afternoon from about 1 o'clock we'll have your mate Joe Kawasaki with us uh, tomorrow who of course yep. made his first defence of the world title that he won off uh, against Chris Eubank uh, in Cardiff at the very arena that we'll be in on Saturday night so he will understand what Joe will be going through in terms of the emotions walking out in front of that big crowd for the first time. Yeah, I'm buzzing to have Joe on tomorrow because we were walking along uh, and he said something to me the other day and I, and I just said to him, that's why you've got to be doing more of this. The insight that he gives, not just as a yeah, former fighter, as much as no, I, yeah. but like as a former legend, it is it's like stuff you've never heard before. So I'm looking forward to having him on the show tomorrow. Um, yeah, he picked me up from Newport today. I thought very privileged and honoured. Wow, wow. So, yeah, legend. Uber driver Joe Kazaki. That's not a bad, uh, <laughs> that's not a bad ride to the venue, is it? Yeah. Um, so, yes, yeah, so as I say, we'll be live uh, about 4.30. I think we go live before the bell, or 4.45, it says here. Uh, myself, Darren, uh, and Barry Jones. I think you and Barry are going to be left alone. I've got an eight-hour shift on Saturday because I'm doing Addy's job as well. Funny. So, I think for two fights, the Ben Crocker fight, the Kieran Jones fight, they're going to leave you, Barry. Oh, so, I'm, I'm lead comms. I think you'll leave two comms. Fights. Yeah. It's going to be like fans. I mean, there's it? been yeah. some amazing moments in boxing but I think this ranks right up I oh, can't wait for it uh, so it all starts Saturday night and of course um, uh, live at the zone from the Motor Point Arena but uh, all the fighters are ready at the desk uh, Cordina Agao and all the undercard too Eddie Hearn standing by as well uh, so let's hand over and head uh, to the desk Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Cardiff City Hall on Jubilee weekend ahead of a huge night of World Championship boxing at the Cardiff Arena. Joe Caldina in his hometown gets a chance to become Wales's 13th World Champion, live on the zone against the outstanding world champion, Kenichi Agawa from Japan. European title action, some of the world's leading prospects on the card here, local talent as well. So much to discuss with you ahead of a great return to this city. It's been a while since we've been here in this great room and since we've been in Cardiff, but very excited. And I feel like it's been a long time since Cardiff have had the opportunity to see what could be a huge star emerge. And Joe Caldina gets his golden opportunity this Saturday, as I said, live on zone around the world. Whenever we come to a city, particularly one that we haven't been to for a while, always important to make sure that we have a string of talent displayed on the undercard. Young talent coming through, a chance to follow in the footsteps of Joe Caldina. And we've got that this week with Joe Morgan, with Ben Crocker, with Monique Bucks and Kyron Jones. And we'll start with them. Joe, firstly, to you. Great support for you this weekend. Of course, great to have World Championship Boxing in Wales and a big part of your development this Saturday. Yeah, I just want to say a big thank you to you, Eddie, for uh, giving me this opportunity. It's uh, nice to box locally in front of an army full of Welsh fans, and I'm, uh, I'm excited to put on a show in front of everyone coming, and uh, 
I could say the same for all the other boys. It's, uh, it's a massive opportunity for all of us. Ben, same for you as well. Of course, uh, undefeated on your professional ranks going through, but a massive opportunity to be on these big shows, obviously rooting for Joe Caldina as well. But Yeah, definitely, same thing. You know, big thanks to Eddie and Matt Shrew for giving me the opportunity. Big thanks to my coach, Gary Locke, for giving me the opportunity as well. Um, big show like this, boxing, Cardiff. I'm from Swansea, but it's only, it's only down the road. I'm going to bring an army of uh, Swansea fans, and I can't wait for it. Karen, as well, similar question. Looking to follow in the footsteps of, of great Welsh fighters before you. Joe, obviously headlining this card, but another opportunity for you on a big show Saturday. Yeah, massive opportunity for myself. I'm um, in only my fourth professional fight. Um, I'd like to thank yourself, Eddie, Matchroom Boxing, uh, my coach and Gary Lockett for always uh, pushing for these opportunities, and the main man himself and Joe in bringing you know big time boxing back to Cardiff. You know I got 200 people coming down from the valleys uh, Saturday, so it's going to be loud. And uh, yeah, massive thanks to all them. I'm looking forward to it. Monique Bucks, welcome. Women's boxing absolutely flying at the moment. Professional debut for you. I've heard the story, singer, DJ, I believe you're even holding an after party after and you're doing a few sets there after, but <laughs> professional debut and I don't think you could find a bigger card, bigger opportunity for you to start your professional journey this weekend. Yeah, really excited to be here. A shout out to Eddie in my room and obviously Lee Ian for getting me on the card. Um, it's in my home city, so it's like a dream debut and I'm happy to be here and obviously getting ready to perform. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready and I can't wait to put on a show. And shout out to my trainer, Tony Borg, as well. Um, yes, it's, it's been a journey, but I'm ready to show people, showcase my skills and get ready um, in my hometown, yeah. And big up Joey, obviously. He's going to perform amazing on Saturday night. Well, good luck to you for another outstanding talent, former GB star, already unblemished record as a professional. Callum French steps up to eight rounds this weekend. Callum, welcome. I know you'll have a few travelling down. It's a long, long way from the North East, but tremendous support and really looking forward to moving up to eight rounds this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, um, Eddie, Matchroom and DeZone for getting us on another terrific card. Uh, I step up to eight rounds. Um, I'm prepared for it. I'm ready. Um, I prepare for every fight like it's a world title fight. Just, uh, just to make sure the best Callum French gets in the ring on the night. And uh, just to get myself into the right habits and rituals. So when it's my turn to headline a show like Joe's doing... Uh, up in my hometown in Newcastle. Uh, I'm going to be in the, um, the right frame of mind for it. I know you've been previously sparring a lot with Conor Ben during his camps as well and obviously talked about originally campaigning at 140, but I know you, the weight's coming down nicely. I heard you talking to Chris Lloyd yesterday about 135 being a target and I feel like it's a great path for you in the lightweight division. Get this eight rounds out of the way and then, and then move into championship stuff towards the end of the year at 135 pounds. Yeah, most definitely, that's the plan. Um, obviously, uh, I boxed at 135 in the, in the amateurs, and then because that weight got taken away out of the Olympic system, I was forced to move up to 140. Um, so coming into the pros, I think we're going to bring it back down to 135 and uh, campaign there and uh, shoot for titles later this year, early next year. Look forward to seeing you in action on Saturday. Great fight to kick off the live main event broadcast on Saturday, the return of Gamal Yafai, former European super bantamweight champion against Liverpool, Sean Cairns. Great fight. Sean, I'll start with you. We know that you took this fight at late notice, but you're ready for, to fight as well. Massive opportunity stepped up. You took it with both hands oh, and a, a big chance on Saturday. Yeah, um, I was ready to box on the 11th of uh, June anyway, so it's perfect timing, nearly. I had my last spar on Tuesday, so... So it fell into place perfect. It was thanks to Eddie and Matt Raymond, and my coaches, Darren Beach and Robbie Butler, who've kept me, kept me on my toes all year. So just a nice one and put a show on Saturday. Gamal Yafai obviously won multiple titles, European champion, lost to Jason Cunningham, but has been out for a long while. You will be the underdog going into this fight, but a big opportunity here to, to move into championship contention. Sean? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you saw something to Jamal. I was spinning it over to him. Didn't <laughs> yeah, I think, if, you know, I can just go out and do my best, and I think I can upset the apple cart, to be fair. Like, I'm not here to tear myself over, like, I'm here to win. So, we'll see Saturday, Eddie. So, just thanks for asking me. Gamal, I think when we talk about boxing families, 
Yours is right up there, of course. Galau now making his way. Great performance at Madison Square Garden recently on the Katie Taylor Serrano card. Uh, Cow looking to make his return into World Championship contention and a very important fight for you. It's been a long time out of the ring. I know you've been working very hard in Sheffield, but a very important fight in your career as well on Saturday. Yeah, um, it's been a while. I've been uh, itched to get back in there and um, get, get a win and crack on with my career. But um, I get the win on Saturday night and I can move on, get, get back up to European level and then take on the world. How tricky are these fights? Obviously, it's uh, supposed to be a stepping stone fight for you, if you like. No disrespect to Sean, but to move back into championship contention, but all of a sudden fighting a, a domestic fighter that's got a massive opportunity to change his career as well. Not going to be an easy task. Yeah, but you just got to win. We got to win them all, no matter who is. If he's from Liverpool, he's from Argentina, if he's from Mexico, I've got to win. It doesn't matter if it's a, it's a domestic dust up or if it's an international fight. Um, like you say, you just got to get the W and crack on, and that's what I'm going to do Saturday night. Good luck, Gamal and Sean. Talk about, of course, the rise of women's boxing. Someone that's been probably more active than most around the world, Sky Nicholson. With a big step up on Saturday, moving to eight rounds against former world champion Gabrielle Bouvier. Uh, Gabrielle, I'll start with you. Um, welcome to the UK for the first time. Fighting a, a fighter with a lot less experience than you in the professional game and ready to return to the ring this weekend. Hola, primero, muchas gracias por, por, por la invitación. Y sí, estoy consciente de que ella tiene menos experiencia como profesional, pero sí amateur. Y bueno, vengo preparada para hacer una muy buena pelea el sábado. Well, firstly, thank you very much for the invite to be here, Eddie. It's, uh, it's a privilege to be here. I'm very happy to take on Sky in this, uh, this bout. Uh, as you know, I've had quite a lengthy career, both as an amateur and a pro. And I'm hoping this weekend is going to be an opportunity to show that I've got it. Thank you, Gabriel. Sky, welcome back. I think four fights in 91 days or something. But this one, very different. Uh, a big step up in terms of the opposition you face for in, in terms of experience and credibility, a former world champion and expecting a solid test. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the plan was always to have a really active start and um, Matchroom has definitely delivered and I'm very, very grateful for that. Um, I'm excited for the step up. I'm not afraid of a challenge and, and I hope she brings a challenge for me. I, I want to have a real fight. I want to be in a real fight. Like I said from the start, uh, I think that's where you're going to see the best me. How important has that activity been for you as well? I know obviously you box in America twice and plan a, a break after this as well, but before you move to championship level, this is the perfect kind of opponent to, protect, to prepare you for those rounds. Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel we're making great improvements every time we fight. So um, having these back-to-back -back fights, having that time in the gym with Eddie has been perfect for me. Uh, we're, we're seeing those improvements and adapting to the pro style, and uh, I think we're going to see the same again in this fight. Good luck, Sky. Gabriella. We talk about other great talents. Dalton Smith, for me, one of the top young talents in world boxing right now. Again, defending his WBC international title against Mario Peroni. Mario, we'll start with you. Welcome. We've seen you over on these shores before. Very, very tough. And you're facing a, an outstanding champion this weekend. Hola, muchas gracias por la invitación. Sí, me, ya sé que es un tipo fuerte, bueno, pero bueno, me hubiese gustado que me inviten con un poquito más de anticipación, pero como, como cada pelea que hago yo, me subo a dejar todo arriba al ring. Uh, again, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I know I'm up against a very uh, formidable opponent. He's a very tough lad, and it's well known, but uh, I'm full of energy myself for this weekend, and I'll be putting on a good spectacle for all. Thank you. Dalton, welcome. Um, people will look at it as a late addition, but you've known for a while that you're likely to be on this card. A frustrating period looking to challenge for that Lonsdale belt. A lot of people, quite frankly, don't fancy it. We'll get there in the end, but a good opportunity for you to defend that belt and keep busy after a great performance in Leeds. Yeah, like you say, um, it was three and a half weeks, I think, camp for this, but, you know, that's, that's what happens when you stay in the gym and, you know, you live the life and, you know, you're able to get straight back out, but... You know, that's what I wanted. I wanted to stay active. Um, we was looking towards the British, but, you know, thank you for the opportunities for getting me on the card, fitting another fight in before. And, um, yeah, I'm on a big stage again and, you know, another chance to, you know, show, show what Dalton Smith's about. I know we're looking for those big step-ups now and you're ready for those with the team, but quite handy, these fights as well, because if you weren't quite ready, you're still learning, you're still progressing and, and preparing. As I said, we all want you to win that British title. 
We feel like you're the kind of fighter that should be chasing British and European titles before going on to world level. But a tough opponent as well, who we've seen before, and will be good to get the rounds in rather than just staying in the gym and waiting. That's it. And, you know, when a fighter's active, that's when they're learning. You know, that's when they're improving and that's what it's about. And, you know, you know I'm moving forward now on the big stage. And, you know, I want to say one thing for me, being at a press conference like this and having joy, you know, <laughs> me growing up, obviously, my dad coaching me um, and seeing what Joe and his dad Enzo did in the support, sport, you know, it's, you know, I feel privileged for him to be at one of my press conferences and um, I want to grab a picture with him because it's been 20 years I've been waiting for that. So, um, so yeah, I'm pri I feel privileged to be on the show, you know, supporting Joe to become um, the next Welsh world champion and, um, yeah, big opportunity and you're going to see a lot more from me. Good stuff, Dalton. We echo that shout-out to the great Joe Calzaghi here in the press conference and working for the zone at the weekend. Legend of the sport. We go on to the co-main event and two really good super featherweight fights. Of course, the main event for the world title, but this one as well, the European super featherweight championship with massive ramifications at world level as well. The champion, Farouk Kurbanov against Manchester's Zelfa Barrett. We saw Kurbanov in a great fight with Joe Caldina during fight camp as well. Zelfa Barrett, quite frankly, wants the winner of the main event this weekend. Farouk, we'll start with you. Um, translator here as well. That's all right, you can stay there. You can stay there. Okay, you can watch this. This is going to be right round the back. Wow, rapid. Thank you. Farouk, welcome back to the UK. This time in front of a crowd, which is much nicer. This time as European champion and obviously a chance for yourself to defend and move on potentially to a shot at the world title. Oui, tout d'abord, euh, merci pour cette invitation, en match room pour cette organisation. Je suis ravi d'être ici, avoir cette situation en étant champion d'Europe. Euh, J'espère de, de faire tout mon possible, de garder le titre le samedi. Voilà. Yeah, well, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm delighted to be here as the defending European champion. And I'm sure coming Saturday, I'll be able to take that step forward, as you say, towards the world. Obviously, a former opponent, Joe Caldina, going for the world title as well. You, go, you had a good fight with him and a, a good experience and, and good to operate at that world level. Bien sûr que chaque combat, ça me fait progresser. Je pris de l'expérience parce que Caldina, voilà, il est dans le top mondial. Et aujourd'hui, la preuve, il fait un championnat du monde. Alors, ça m'a permis quand même de, de progresser et de prendre énormément d'expérience. Yeah, I was uh, obviously I came out of that fight second two years ago, but uh, it was it gave me a lot of opportunity to improve my game. And uh, with all respect to him, here now he's got a shot at the world title, and uh, all the best to him. Thank you, Farouk, and thank you to the translators. Well. Are you doing the Japanese as well? No. No, I was going to say unbelievable value for money. I mean, <laughs> French, Spanish, and Japanese. That would have been exceptional. Thank you. Thank you to everybody. Zelfa. Welcome. I mean, uh, firstly, an emotional time for you, of course, June the 4th, the anniversary of your mum's passing. You know, you've talked about that mm -hmm. a lot. Great inspiration for you going into this weekend. And what a massive fight for your career. You know, looking at, of course, Cordina against Agawa, but a chance for you to become European champion and move on to a shot at the world title. Yeah, man, sure. Um, I'm out to part of performance, you know, I respect for Ruka, the champion. You know, I've watched him, you know, and but I just believe in my abilities and I believe, you know, anything he can do, I can do better than him. And... You know, I've got more of a purpose Saturday night. Listen, two men can be with me that day. I don't care who's in with me, but I'm going to put out a performance. Obviously, a tough fight for, for yourself, firstly. Korbanov you know, had a good fight with Joe behind closed doors as well. He's very fit, you know, has a great chin, and you know, he's busy in there as well. But also, of course, one eye on the main event, looking to hopefully get the European strap around you and then go and sit ringside and and urge Joe Caldina on, really. Let's, let's get it right for, for a potential huge all-British affair for the world title. Yeah, no doubt. Of course I want Joe to win, you know, for his family and, you know, it works out a better fight for us. You know, we can set our family up from there, hopefully, if you, if you give us a good opportunity for it. But, yeah, um, of course I want Joe to win, but the main focus is Farouk. When I've, when I've dealt with him, then, you know, wing side. Great fight. European Super Featherweight Championship, the champion... Korbanov against Zelfa Barrett looking to move on to become European champion and fight for the world title. Now we go to the main event, the IBF Super Featherweight World Championship. I've got to say, as a fight fan, this is a fight I'm really, really looking forward to. Joe Caldina 
as we've taken many fighters from the professional debut to the World Championship, great fighters from the Olympics, the likes of Katie Taylor, the likes of Callum Smith, and the likes of Anthony Joshua, all move forward to fight for world titles. Cal Yafai, Gamal's brother, Charlie Edwards, so many other fighters as well. And Joe Caldina gets a chance, a golden chance, to become world champion in Cardiff this weekend to become the 13th world champion. Joe, we'll start with you as challenger. This is it, really, isn't it? I mean, I've, I've seen you heap the pressure on yourself, which I really like. You know, some people say, well, you know, if you, if you lose, it's not the end of the world. But as you said, now or never, really, these opportunities come around once in a lifetime in your home city, a chance to become world champion on Saturday. Yeah, of course. Obviously, first of all, I want to say thank you to Eddie, um, Matchroom, zone. Obviously, for uh, Ogawa for accepting his fight and coming to Cardiff. Um, so, yeah, but I put the pressure on myself. I don't see it that way. People might see it that way. I just, I've, I believe my ability. I, I know I'm at world level. Um, and I've said it time and time again. I'm not, I'm not bothered about any other title in between a world title. All I want is a world title. And, yeah, if I lose, which I don't, I don't plan on losing, um, I'm, I'm 30 now. It's a long way to build back up. So for me, this is my opportunity. I'm going to grab it with both hands. I literally, I can touch it. I just got to grab it off him. So for me, um, this is my time. It's an opportunity for me to showcase my talent in front of the world and announce myself on a big stage. I know you've got a great boxing brain and you've had a great camp with Tony Sims. I see that the bookmakers make you a favourite for this fight as well. The ones that aren't so sure will say that you haven't boxed at the level of a gal yet, and I think we all agree with that, but you've got the ability to box at that level. Do, yeah. you, do you expect there to be, a, for you to make that big step up, you have to go to a level that you haven't boxed at before this weekend? Yeah, on paper, um, he's a level above. But when you look at what I've done, let's, I'll just go to the amateurs, for instance, but this is a completely different game. The amateurs, I, I haven't done what I've done in the amateurs for, for no reason. I was at the top level, I was ranked number six in the world for many years. Um, one European gold, which is one of five uh, fighters from Britain to ever do it. And then coming to the pros and from my sixth fight was fighting championship rounds. So fighting tough fighters, some unbeaten fighters, some that have had hard roads and tough and they're bogeymen for a lot of people and potential slip-ups. When you look at Ogawa's record, don't get me wrong, he's, he's got a lot of knockouts, but you look at them early fights, um, I think even leading up to like the, his 18th fight, he's fighting people that have I was fighting in my third and fourth fight, the same record. So when you look at it, there's only three people I'd say in his, in, on his record that were worth mentioning at, at, at any decent level, which was Fusili, which he's a, good, he's, he's a good level. I don't think he's world level. You've got Joe uh, Noine, um, I think from Philippines, and you've got Tevin Farmer. They're the record, record, recognized names. So for me, yeah. On paper, he's a level above, and I, I'm going to have to step up and show that I'm at that world level. I believe I'm at that world level, and I've, I've sparred plenty of uh, world champions, um, plenty of people that are tipped off to be world champions, and I've been in with some tough guys. Obviously, we, we got Conor Ben at the back, um, arguably one of the most explosive punchers and fighters on the planet right now, and I've done numerous rounds with him, um, and he can tell you, I'm, I'm technically good and I'm tough, um, but I'm also I got a great boxing brain. And as as you said, that's that's what I'm one of my strengths. And I believe my boxing brain can uh, think my I can think my way around the ring and get that win on um, on Saturday night. We talk about that toughness. I think that's what a lot of people are talking about in this fight. They're mm. talking about the skills of Joe Caldina against the strength mm. and the power of a gal. A lot of people expect him to try and walk you down mm. and you to try and outbox him as well, but ready to go to those, those yeah. deep places because it's going to get tough in there against a gal. Very, very strong, but you know, you, you, like you say, you've shown that toughness and you expect to have to show that in moments on Saturday night as well. Yeah, of course. Listen, if you come in the gym sometimes when I'm sparring, the, the things you see me doing in a fight, you don't see when I'm doing inspiring um, and vice versa. Inspiring, I, I put it on people. I haven't had to do it yet in, in, in a fight because relatively and more, more than, um, yeah, near enough all of my fights, they've been re relatively comfortable and I haven't had to dig in and bite down on my gum shield. But I'm willing to dig down, uh, dig deep, bite down on my gum shield, dig my toes in and get stuck in if needs be. But... I know I got the skills to outbox Ogawa, and um, 
he's going to have to ask himself some questions also. Because I know he's been on the floor, but um, the guy who put him, put him down, he wasn't pressing him. I'm going to press him and look to knock him back out. But at the same time, I've got to be careful what's coming back. And I'm, I'm willing to, to do everything it takes on Saturday to, um, to, to take that title off him. Thank you, Joe. Great words. To the champion, Kenichi Agawa, welcome. Um, a great performance at Madison Square Garden. You become world champion. Now you have to travel again to defend your title. Joe Caldina says he's looking to knock you out on Saturday night. You look in great shape, ready for the challenge. え、まずマダソンスクエアガーデンでは非常にいいパフォーマンスでチャンピオンになれて、え、おめでとうございます。またえ、今回、え、コーディナがあなたをノックアウトでノックアウトして勝つと言ってますけれども、え、どうでしょ
before the, the final bell. For Joe, he does have them options. He does have the option to fight on the back foot, frustrate Agawa, try and annoy him, get him to load up, etc. If he does hold the centre ring, we're in for a great fight. Do you know what as well? I think I think some people, and we talked about this with, uh, with Jordan Gill a few weeks ago, when you get very slick, stylistically, technically good fighters who tend to box on the back foot, tend to pick shots, move, create angles, you think maybe they haven't got the dog in them. And sometimes you don't realise until you need... It, what you've actually got and I remember going and seeing Joe sparring with Lewis Rickson when he was undefeated and still had that aura of invincibility about him and thinking this will be a certain type of spar Joe will be picking and moving turning him but he, he held his feet and traded with Rickson for 8-9 for rounds and that was an interesting thing to witness because you then realise okay if this guy needs to he can go to several places the same thing I had exactly the same thing you know I'd like to think I was more of a stand up fighter technically sound uh, but I always had this annoy- a bit that annoyed me because I always felt people didn't think I had that tough and that grit and determination and I think Joe has proved it already but I reckon there will be moments in this fight where he shows everyone look I am willing to dig dig deep um, and of course in your big moment when you won the IBF you, you had to get off the floor being hurt to the body badly a guy was a very very good body puncher throws the right hand to the body a lot the left hook under the elbow um, uh, it could be I think Cordina's chin has never really looked in, in question from, from all the amateur bouts I've ever seen him in no. from the professional context never looked um, questionable upstairs but of course with the way that a gal punches to the body he's only got to catch him wrong at some point and, and that could be where Cordina has to work his way through mm. potentially a difficult patch but you have to expect these kind of patches in, in world title fights it's never going to be easy it shouldn't be easy no of course not and th- these are the margins it's the, di- it's the difference between getting up and staying down mm. and uh, I- I'm sure like you say his chin's never been questioned sparring with though it's sparring don't get me wrong but sparring with the likes of Connor etc in the gym I know these guys don't hold back no they don't and no. Joe Joe's chin's never been questioned at all you know and he's got that dog in him I know he has and uh, yeah room for a cracker Sky Nicholson on the left and uh, Gabriela Bouvier from Maldonado in uh, Uruguay on the right she's uh, boxed at a high level for a number of years she boxed for world titles early and uh, fell short against some of the best fighters in the world she's been in with most of the best South Americans in and around her weight division in the last 10 years she's beaten a handful she's lost to a handful too but she does have the experience and 30 years of age still in her prime to uh, potentially ask a question or two of uh, Sky Nichols and that will be uh, second on the bill live on the zone Mario Fai will be opening uh, against Sean Cairns. There's Dalton Smith, who I believe is going to be challenging for the British title at £140 a little bit later on this year. Akeem Ennis Brown was due to be his opponent. He's dropped out, and of course, we wish him well. Um, and it uh, looks like Casey Benjamin could be the logical replacement for him. Benjamin, I think he's 16 and 1 in, in really, really good form over the last couple of years, too. But uh, asking Smith yesterday, cannot afford to overlook Mara Perrin, who's well, he's been out of the ring for three years and boxed at lighter weight divisions, but boxed uh, Ryan Garcia, Avery Sparrow, some, some decent operators over the years. But the inactive and the size difference could well be telling in that fight. Uh, there is Farouk Kobanov on the left and our man Zelfa Barrett and uh, well the anniversary as you heard earlier on of his mum's passing exactly a year ago to the day on Saturday. Um, well I mean credit to him for, for the way he's dealt with what must have been just a, a, an awful 12 months. Uh, kept busy, kept kept fighting and uh, well it certainly won't be over as far as the process is concerned but this will be I suppose some maybe modicum of closure for him if he can get a big win on a, on a horrendous anniversary on Saturday night and know that he's working his way towards bigger and better things in boxing. Uh, absolutely, and I mean, how big is a pot of gold? Mm. Potentially, potentially lining up a fight on. at one of these guys on stage now. Yeah, we thought maybe Cordina and Barrett would be in some kind of final eliminator for this title, but it has been Cordina whose opportunity has come first. There is the champion, and credit to him, as Joe mentioned, for travelling from his home city of Tokyo to Cardiff on Saturday night will he want to take the chance and risk it on points he said he's, he's coming to fight what will this man do you may see him boxing spurts may see him moving spurts he's got a very very good well rounded toolkit a little bit of height there you can just see maybe an inch or two and he's rangy Cordino who boxes long good balance but this man can punch he is dangerous and that threat will be ever present even if Cordina finds himself ahead on the cards. You'll know, Darren, at this level, and he'll know the man in front of him. He cannot afford to switch off for a moment. No, you can't. Not at this level. Absolutely not. He needs to stay completely disciplined and, and focused throughout every second of, of every round. I think variation's key. Um, you can't be predictable at this level. You've got to change things up front foot, back foot, different angles, different shot selection. You need a bit of everything. And like we've touched on before, uh, bundles of toughness as well because he will have to dig deep no doubt
Um, we'll be speaking to Super Joe Kazagi, who'll be with us uh, throughout the way in show tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock. Always good to get the insights of uh, the former greats, and, and he'll be talking us through what Joe may be going through uh, as he ring walks at the motor point on Saturday night live on the zone. He's just walking past behind the camera, and you'll see him uh, on set with us uh, tomorrow afternoon from one o'clock way in. All the undercard will be going through and hitting the scales, uh, and of course, our main event is Joe Cordina uh, and Kenichi Agawa. IBF Super Featherweight World Title on the line live on the zone on Saturday night. Have a good evening, folks, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye bye. My main goal is to become a world champion. I'm ever so close now, I can literally touch it. All I gotta do is grab it. Regarded as one of the most talented boxers in Britain. Ogawa! What a power punching display from Kenichi Ogawa! Beautiful brutality. The new IBF Super Featherweight Champion of the World. Standout, eye catching performance from Joe Cordina. Is this a new stage of his career?